tell us about Married Priests Now, a new movement being organized and led by Archbishop Malingo and yourself to address the situation of the estimated 150,000 married priests who have been, in a sense, ostracized uh, in their role as priests by the Roman Catholic Church. Tell us about uh, Married Priests Now. Approximately 150,000 Roman Catholic priests have married in the past two to three decades. Mm. In the United States alone, 20,000 mm. Roman Catholic priests have married. Mm. All of that in light of the fact that there are literally thousands of parishes in the Roman Catholic Church in the United States of America uh -huh. that do not have a priest. Mm. They are priestless parishes. Yeah. Where there is no Eucharist, there is no Catholicism. Mm. And you cannot have Eucharist. You cannot have the body and blood of Jesus the Christ unless there are priests there to celebrate mm. or to celebrate Mass and to confect the Eucharist. Mm. So the Archbishop, in his wisdom, has said, we have a solution mm. to all of the priestless parishes in the United States and in Europe, mm. around the world. Mm that we can reinstate these married priests to active ministry mm -hmm. to serve these vacant priestless churches sure. mm -hmm. and, and reach into a rich reservoir of men who have been trained, educated, experienced in pastoral ministry mm -hmm. to serve in these churches. Well, not only that, but wouldn't, I guess, thinking about it, they would also bring something new to the church, which is an understanding about family life, exactly. marriage, right. which uh, the average priest and uh, bishop and cardinal aren't so, uh, don't know so much about on a personal level. Exactly. I always prided myself as a priest <laughs> when it came to marriage counseling. I, a single man, uh, didn't need to be married in order to advise a married couple on, on the do's and the don'ts. How naive I really was mm. until I got married and had a wife and kids myself. Mm. It made it very real. Mm. I, can, I can give much better counseling and advice to couples who are preparing for marriage now because I have gone down that path. Yeah. The beautiful thing about Jesus and in following Jesus is that he had already gone that, down the path mm. that leads us back to God. Mm. And he was not one who came among us who did not know our sufferings, who did not know our struggles. He, he preceded us on that path. Therefore, he could lead us in the right way. Married priests in the Roman church, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the best of both worlds. It's a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. The Roman Catholic Church will have re reinstated those men who spent half their lives preparing for ordained ministry and who served faithfully and with a level of professionalism that is unrivaled yeah. uh, in any other religious institution. And yet at the same time, these men have an experience of family who can share with the church the beauty of marriage. Archbishop Malingo states it this way, it is from married families that Priests, bishops, popes, and saints came. Mm. The more families we have, especially with priests, with especially with married priests, mm. the more will the church be able to produce better priests, bishops, popes, and saints. And I guess also we can imagine uh, nuns also being able to participate in that kind of. Oh uh, yes, that goes uh, without saying. You know, once uh, <laughs> once the priests are allowed to marry, the nuns will come. And we're not married. The association, the organization of married priests now is not seeking to challenge the church's position on celibacy. Mm. We believe that if the Roman Catholic Church is willing to reconcile with married priests uh -huh. and to reinstate these married priests into ordained ministry, into active ordained ministry, uh -huh. then celibacy will become a non-issue. Mm. But it still will allow for those men who desire not to marry, who prefer to live a, a, a non-married life, a celibate life, can still do so. But we will dis soon discover that most men will choose marriage and will bring forth a stronger, better, and healthier church as a result of it. Why do you think leaders of the Roman Catholic Church oppose ending mandatory 
celibacy and allowing priests to marry? Why do they oppose it? I think it is opposed not on not based upon any biblical teachings because mm. the Bible does not uh, say that only celibate men can be priests. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's just the opposite. Mm. St. Peter was married. Mm. Practically all of the apostles were married. Mm. Uh, in the beginnings of the church, yeah. bishops were married, yes. priests were married. It wasn't until Even 11, popes, right? popes were married. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until 1134 mm -hmm. that celibacy became mandatory mm -hmm. in the Roman church. That's the 12th century. Mm -hmm. So the church has been, the Roman Catholic Church has had a married priesthood longer than a non-married priesthood, mm. historically, yeah. if you look at the 2,000 year span. Mm. Uh, the church, I think, looks at celibacy as the lesser of two problematic areas. If the priest is allowed to marry, the church senses that somehow it has an obligation to the spouse of the priest and the children once that priest is incapacitated or dies. That's why celibacy really came in. It's in a the financial first obligation. It's a financial obligation. That's, that's why it changed in 1134 mm -hmm. because it was an economic issue, mm -hmm. not a spiritual issue mm -hmm. at all. And we're paying the price for it now in the Roman church as a result of that. It, history has caught up with us 900 years later. But the point is, uh, the Roman Catholic Church is just simply saying, it, it simply takes the position that we have decreed through our church tradition that men cannot marry. Uh, in the Roman Church, even though there are married priests in the Roman Catholic Church functioning in institutions and parishes. Mm -hmm. Those men who were Anglican or Episcopal mm. or Episcopalian mm -hmm. priests, mm -hmm. Lutheran priests, who had married prior to becoming Roman Catholic priests, they have been allowed to uh, maintain their marriages. So there's already a precedent. Yes, there's a precedent already. So mm -hmm. all we're saying is that, you know, broaden the horizon, uh, see the bigger picture, mm. that uh, we'll have more priests if we allow men to marry.